black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing down a dead fire at Reality Temple. Reality Temple. My black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing down a dead fire at Reality Temple. Unless he brings us into understanding, we can't understand what he's doing. So people ask today with all this bloodshed all over the earth, where's God? When 9-11 took place and the towers went down and 3,000 Americans and others died, the question was asked, where was God? Because we think that God is not present in disaster. <laughs> we think that God is not present in war. We think that God is not present in misfortune. We fix God up to be what we want him to be. He's a good God. Of course he is. But that don't mean he won't allow evil. He's a good God. But evil has a purpose. Otherwise he would not have allowed Satan to rule. So even in the rule of Satan, God is present. Just not actively present in that Satan is given power over his creatures to produce an effect. We often wonder, well, God, if you're such a good God, why did you let our former slave masters treat us like this? That's a very good question. You such a good God. How you gonna let this man hang us? How you gonna let this man castrate us? How you gonna let this man enslave us? And you so good. How why should I believe in you? So the God just says, Well, young man or young woman, have you studied my pattern? Have you studied the pattern of life itself? Have you studied the struggle of life to come forth out of darkness? Have you studied the pain that coming out of darkness produces? Have you studied why I have ordained struggle for every life and if you don't want to struggle and face difficulties then maybe you should never have been born because that's my pattern how dare you fall out because some misfortune has come in your life well you know we, we was in a fire and everything got burned up and yes what else and some of my family died in the fire yes I gave life I'm the ultimate cause of death you got a problem with my will because you gonna die too and you don't know how, you don't know in what circumstance, you don't know in what place, but you do know. You do know. You getting up out of here. 
That's the pattern of life. If you don't want to die, then you should never have been born. But now that you're born, then you need to understand what is the purpose for your life before you get out of here. Some of you, some of you are so happy to praise and honor Jesus without ever considering the price that God permitted him to pay for the redemption of others. You don't mind him paying a price. Glad it wasn't me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But don't ask me to pay no price. And I want to be your son. I want to be your daughter. But Lord, what you did to your son. Hell, I, I don't know whether I want to be your son. Donald B. Elijah Muhammad used to say, they all want my place, but they don't want to pay my price. We all want greatness. We dream about being great. But the road to greatness is not an easy road. When God chooses a people to raise them from ignominy to eminence. The road is hard. The process of making you into something that you never dreamed you could be is difficult. But so many of you want something in life but when the test of Sacrifice or suffering. Practice. Well, I think I'll change my mind. I remember when I was a young boy, I used to play the violin at school assemblies. And I, I, I did play well, and so some of my classmates would say, Gee, Lewis, uh, how long have you been playing that thing, you know? I said, oh, about seven years now. Seven years. <laughs> they thought they could just pick it up and play. So many of you started like this. Mama gave you a piano. You hit a few notes and all of a sudden you say, oh, damn, this is... Ma, give me a guitar. Ma, give me a saxophone. Ma, give me a clarinet. I don't care what Mama give you. If you're going to be great, you have to make a sacrifice. And because you want instant greatness, you're never prepared to suffer to become great. Blessed are they who find their purpose in life, but even more blessed are they who become what their purpose is. See, to say I know why I'm here, but then don't do nothing about it. You're an enemy to yourself. The little sick life we're living sick life get up in the morning eat turn on the TV eat go to work if you got a job eat come back home eat look at the TV eat 
Say, wait. That's a hell of a life. And year after year after year, you go downtown Atlanta, you see a pair of shoes you want. So you put your little money aside and you get your shoes and you, oh, don't I look, oh, God, look at them shoes. Stilettos, too. Mm. You get the things in life that you seek. A new car, a fur coat, a new apartment, a new house. And you're only happy for a moment. For a moment. Because nothing that you have is there to fulfill your purpose. Nothing that you acquire can give you the joy that only working to be what God created you to be will give you. Well, how do I discover myself? I'm going to give you a journey. I've always loved black people. And I heard that there was a man in America who loved black people and did something about it. He was raising black people up from the condition that white America had imposed on us. I said, let me go hear this man. When I heard the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I wasn't quite convinced, you know. I was somewhat convinced. My wife jumped up and joined. She joined ahead of me. And <laughs> I was a little slow. I was in show business, and I heard she was going to the temple. I said, Don't go. Don't go till I check this out. <laughs> she didn't pay me no attention. <laughs> she went on to the temple and heard the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So when she saw him, she was ready right then. I had never been before. I wasn't, I was fairly convinced. But I went back to New York and I went over to Temple Number Seven. And Brother Malcolm came out and taught. Well, it was James Seven next, the first night I was there. And, uh,. He was convincing. He was convincing. But I was leaning there. My black people, it's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Jackie King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing down the damn fire at reality temple. Reality temple. My black people, it's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Jackie King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality temple.